Now, Nestle is a very well-loved brand among Malaysians. Malaysia has become the most important Milo market. In fact, 108 years to be exact, since exactly. 1912. So plant-based is emerging as a trend, and we are also one, probably the largest halal manufacturer within the Nestle world. Very important role that Invest Langor plays, especially on facilitating the engagement and the communication. My name is Juan Aranols and I'm the CEO of Nestle Malaysia and I have the honor of representing over 5,000 colleagues that work hard every day to give you the healthiest, tastiest and more nutritional products under your favorite brands, Milo, Maggi, Nescafe and many others. In today's episode, we will be looking at a company that has had the trust of Malaysian families for over 100 years, Nestle. With over 500 halal certified products, Nestle Malaysia has kept the market satiated with locally made leading brands such as Milo, Maggi and Nescafe. Despite having a strong catalogue filled with popular household names, the dire impact of the recent COVID-19 pandemic cannot be denied. The company's second quarter earnings showed a decline of 32.7% year-on-year to 105.5 million ringgit. In its efforts to bounce back, the company recently revealed their plans for a significant investment going into their Shah Alam factory, where they are building a pioneering manufacturing facility for plant-based meal solutions. We will discover what are Nestle's long-term plans for the Malaysian market and the role Invest Langor has played in helping them to achieve their goals. Hi, you are watching Investment Insider with me, Cynthia Ng. Joining me on the show today is the Chief Executive Officer of Nestle Malaysia, Mr. Juan Aranols. Welcome, Juan, and thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Thank you, Cynthia. It's a real pleasure. Now, Nestle is a very well-loved brand among Malaysians. It has a long history here, in fact, 108 years to be exact, since exactly. 1912. So, what would you attribute the company's uh, staying power to, despite the multitude of competitions that have popped up over the years? I think you mentioned, I mean, 108 years is a long trajectory and throughout all this time, we have been building consistently our brands and we have been always remain very loyal to our uh, original purpose, no? which is no other than use food to make good, no? to enhance the quality of life of everybody and increasingly not just for today, but also thinking on the next generations to come. So Nestle always has been building business everywhere with a long-term ambition. And Malaysia has become the most important Milo market in the Nestle world, always being consistent with uh, what we promise. No? And what we promise has been no other than delivering tasty, healthy, nutritious products and also increasingly sustainable products. So I'd like to take, pick your point about being sustainable. Yeah. Nestle is the world's largest food company. There is a lot of pressure for yeah. companies to be environmentally sustainable and to fight climate change. What is Nestle doing towards that direction to be more sustainable? And Nestle started many years ago. We have been always, you know, our operations, I think have been very conscious of the impact they have in the communities. We want to have all our packaging fully recyclable by 2025. And actually in Malaysia, we are making good progress in that direction. Already 90% of our packaging is designed for recycling. And uh, there is the other element more linked to climate warming, which is also what we do to basically reduce emission, emissions. No? And we have basically committed that by 2050, we will have uh, a carbon neutral operation globally and certainly also in Malaysia. One of the interesting things that I found out about Nestle is that the group is planning to move into plant-based meal yeah. solutions. And in April uh, 2019, as of April 2019, a total of 59 Nestle products has uh, attained the Healthier Choice logo or the HCL yeah. certification. And subsequently, I think you mentioned during the second quarter earnings that you'll be building a plant yeah. that is catered, that will cater to plant-based 
meal solutions. Can you please tell us more about that? Firstly, on the first element, on the Healthy Choice logo, that's basically part of an effort that we are doing consistently year after year, which is basically improve the nutritional profile of our products. Eh? And plant-based is an emerging trend that comes mostly from um, Western countries, which is more on the environmental kind of uh, side of the concerns. There is also the business opportunity. So plant-based is emerging as a trend. We have actually the Actually, they go in parallel. So in Asia, Nestle has only two production sites. One will be based in China, and the other one will be here. The one in China will cater mostly for the huge Chinese uh, market, while we will be a production base not only for Malaysia, but basically for the rest of Asia. And we are very excited. So this will go live probably towards the end of the year. That's very exciting. Nestle currently has six manufacturing facilities in Malaysia, yeah. of which three are located in Selangor. Exactly. Tell us about uh, your expansion plans. Are we looking at more locations being opened here in Malaysia? So as you mentioned, we have six factories. Uh, three of them are in Selangor. Uh, one in Negeri Sembilan, but actually it's two because it's a huge site. The Chembong Milo factory and then the Chembong confectionery and ice cream plant. And then we have also in East Malaysia in Kuching a noodles plant. So in terms of sites, probably we have those that we need, but we continue kind of expanding those sites. The plant-based investment that we just mentioned will be done in the Shalam complex that is also home to our Batutiga factory that basically is uh, dealing with the Maggi manufacturing. All your favorite Maggi products are made in Batutiga. There we have also Shalam, where mostly we do Nescafe and a number of other products. And we have also this Rimuda plan, which is basically a recent investment, was done back in 2016. So in a way, Nestle is renewing its choice for Selangor both with the Srimuda investment and with the plant-based investment that will be hosted also there. And again, in Srimuda, we are doing basically all of our uh, ready-to-drink products, no? the UHT, the PET uh, products, etc. Well, thank you so much, uh, Juan, for sharing that. We will take a short break, but when we come back, we, will want, we want to take a closer look at the challenges faced by Nestle during the movement control order and uh, some of the operational challenges that they faced and how uh, does uh, Invest Slang or how Invest Slang or has helped them overcome some of those challenges? So we'll come back after the break to talk about that. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Mr. Juan Arono, CEO of Nestle Malaysia, is still with us on the show. Now, uh, Juan, I would like to uh, turn this discussion to talk about the movement control order that was uh, implemented in March. Uh, that MCO has hit sales and lowered profits for Nestle's uh, second quarter, which ended June 20, 2020. Could you take us through the key considerations that went into your business continuity planning, you know, when the uh, pandemic happened and then the lockdown was was uh, implemented? Firstly, uh, indeed, I mean, clearly we cannot deny, and we also talk about it when we announced results for Q2, we had some impact. When the lockdown happened, all our activities linked to the mobility of the public, or linked to, you know, the, the hospitality industry, hotels, restaurants, cafes, which are very important businesses for us, all that part suffered a lot. But we had the positive side with in-home consumption increasing. Many of our brands were very, very well positioned to capture that growth. I, I think it was not easy for anybody, but uh, what we saw clearly as we move into the recovery movement control order, that allowed to kind of really go to some form of normality. What are the challenges that you face during the movement control order? And I would like to bring the discussion, uh, to bring Invest Langor into this yeah. discussion as a first point of contact to help you overcome up some of these challenges. Could you perhaps share with us perhaps some of the unique challenges that you have faced during that time and how state agencies like Invest Langor has helped you overcome those? It was very helpful, especially on facilitating the engagement and the communication. Because, for instance, I can, I can share with you, it was very clear to everybody that Nestle could operate during MCO. Because, you know, 
in Nestle's basic staples no? for, uh, for the population. But uh, we were not clear how long our uh, upstream and downstream supply chain would be allowed to operate. No? As a company looking at investment long term in this country, right? what are the key criteria that you look for you know, for, for expansion and so for investment? And uh, how does governments or state agencies can help facilitate to make it a conducive environment for business? Well, the first thing for sure is uh, having a strategic location. No? And when you look at Malaysia in the heart of ASEAN, in the heart of Asia, it's a, it's a great place to be because also it has a very good infrastructure base. The digital network starts to be quite, uh, I think, quite good. You have a very good talent pool so we can access skills and capabilities. So, so clearly from all these uh, elements, it's a, it's a good place to be. We also consider uh, you know, whatever incentives can be provided to attract investment, no? because what we must not forget is that Malaysia is not alone in the world. No? It's competing very actively with other countries that sometimes can offer a, a lower cost of labor because they are less developed. And you know, some of our neighbors in ASEAN are good examples. So Malaysia needs to compensate that because actually Malaysia, about 20 plus percent of our sales comes from exports. And we are also one, probably the largest halal manufacturer within the Nestle world. So clearly we have been investing here. We have renewing the choice, Selangor, as I mentioned. Uh, we choose against Selangor when we invested in Nestle Muda in uh, 2016. And we have chosen against Selangor when we have decided where to locate the plant-based uh, infrastructure that will go into the Shalam complex. Juan, how has Invest Langor helped you overcome some of the hurdles that you face as a company and help accelerate the business growth? I think that the very important role that Invest Langor plays is, uh, for instance, in the case of uh, new investments, helping us to kind of put the wheels uh, into motion. There is a big uh, work that is done to obtain uh, the approvals, the permits, uh, also all, everything related to registration of the activity. So clearly that entails quite uh, some work and Invest Selangor helps a lot in guiding that process. They also help us to set up all the utilities around the factories, the water supply, the waste collection. So all these are very critical because also given our volumes, this needs to work very, very perfectly. And also the other element is also guidance on the environmental requirements. That's increasingly important for, I think, all states uh, around Malaysia and across countries. And Invest Selangor has a strict regulatory framework and they are very helpful in guiding us through it. Well, thank you so much, Juan, for your time and thank you for hosting us. We wish you all the best so with your expansion plans and in building Selangor together. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You have been watching Investment Insider with me, Cynthia Ng. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Toyota recorded quite stellar performance. We went out all out and we have the strategy of sales. Are you optimistic about achieving the sales target for this year? Yes, of course.